Have you ever tried climbing a chain link fence? Yes, and I have usually regretted it upon getting to the top, roughly. It's deceptively hard just to get up there, let alone get over. Getting up there is tough, but it's a pretty consistent exercise, but then you reach the top and either you find out, oh shit, there's barbed wire up here, or more often there's not barbed wire, but it's just that like loose part of the fence. Now, can you imagine trying to lift somebody up and throw them over a chain link fence? I can imagine it, and that's about as far as I can get. The throwing is how you describe it, like throwing sounds. That is the verb choice because I want to talk about a rule where throwing would need to be the action. Mm. So the UFC and other MMA organizations love the chain link fence. For those not in the know, the UFC has their fights take place inside what they call the octagon, which is essentially eight chain link fences together. I, I am boiling it down in ways that purists will probably hate, <laughs> but no change there. These fences are six feet high. Theoretically, one could easily climb over it. And therefore, they have a foul in the rulebook addressing this. Foul 17, it is illegal to throw your opponent out of the octagon. Oh, that that's one of those things like saying it's like illegal to like lasso the sun. Like, yeah, okay, I no one can do that. <laughs> You know, usually in conversations for this show, we determine that a rule exists because it was once broken or like a rule exists mm -hmm. because someone found a loophole and the rule closes that loophole. So did someone chuck someone over a six foot chain link fence? Somebody tried. Okay. <laughs> and thankfully that someone's name was Tank. Appropriate. <laughs> when I picture a person named Tank, I'm kind of picturing the like human equivalent of an armadillo. Just like the most <laughs> sturdily built person, impregnable in every way. Brick shit house. Yeah. To the T. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it in one. Nice. <laughs> so Tank, not his Christian name. Uh, mm. His name is David, but fuck that. Tank <laughs> Abbott. He's one of those characters who's perfect for the show because it was very much right place, right time. And that place and time was the UFC in the mid 90s. Mm, a lovely place. They were really trying to figure themselves out. I think some context is the, the very first event uh, the UFC held, it was advertised as no rules. And it had three rules, which <laughs> were no biting, no eye gouging, and no groin shots. Okay, what if you do all three at all at once? Is that a loophole? Okay, so you can bite with your mouth, you can eye gouge with a hand, you can groin shot with the other one. I mean, that that feels like a Super Smash Brothers finisher. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. You gotta push like four buttons at the same time, but <laughs> I'm a little offended by the concept of a no rules match that it has rules. Okay, well, how would you feel if they then went down to just two rules after that. Fine, it, but is it is it no eye gouging? Because that's my whole approach. You would have fit in at UFC 1. Basically, after UFC 1 happened, some of the fighters were like, look, if groin shots had been permitted, which is part of my technique, I would have won. No, I had a great time. It was cool. I wouldn't have minded touching a few more nut sacks, but <laughs> other than that, it was great. So the, the UFC... They, they listened to their fighters, mm -hmm. and they said, all right, UFC 2, we got two rules now. <laughs> you, can, you can shoot all the nuts you want. You know, not everything has to be a rule. Sometimes it's good to write out more permissive stuff. So I think the rules should go, number one, no eye gouging. Number mm -hmm. two, no biting. Number three, groin shots are welcome. Like, <laughs> you don't have to remove it, just I like it. that. Be positive. So that is just to say, they were really figuring themselves out. In the middle of all that, Tank Abbott shows up. Mm. He gets there in time for UFC 6. They promote him as this this brawler, this this street fighter. He, he has a background in wrestling, but he had also allegedly like 250 street fights to his name, which I assume is fully a number out of somebody's ass, because... Yeah, I mean, a regular, like, you and I, what, I, I have like seven or eight. That's a more normal number of street fights for a guy to have. Street fighting and kiss fighting is the same, right? If it's in the street, it's in the street. So Tank Abbott had 250 kiss fights to his name. <laughs> There's no rule that says you can't. <laughs> so he competes at UFC 6, 
he is the brawler, the street fighter that they build him as. But the event that is worth talking about today is his his second time out with UFC, which was at <laughs> it was at Ultimate Ultimate Two. U squared two. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that it's ultimate. Sorry, it's ultimate ultimate. <laughs> like that's the one word you can't really double. The whole point of the word ultimate is that the, that's it. Well, and you have to consider the actual full name because it was UFC colon the Ultimate Ultimate 2 was actually Ultimate Fighting Championship the Ultimate <laughs> Ultimate 2. That is aggro as hell to the point that it sounds like a joke. That's awesome. I love it. So Tank Abbott, he's fighting this guy, Cal Worsham. Before the fight, Worsham had, had said that he was going to tame the tank. I wish I had the confidence to mix a metaphor that egregiously. <laughs> To tame a tank? What do you think a tank is, my friend? Well, you know, they're, they're in herds. In the <laughs> you look out on the savannah, and a, a pride of wild tanks crests over the horizon. Long story short, he did not tame the tank. Uh, <laughs> right, right from the jump, Abbott was just all over him, forced him to the fence, which then put him in a position where he's lifting him up, fence is right behind him, and there's a moment where you can tell he just says, Fuck it, he's going over the fence. <laughs> and it looks like the guys in those strongman competitions where they're trying to lift a boulder up to, onto a pedestal. But instead of a boulder, it's a human being who does mm -hmm. not want to be lifted up onto and over the pedestal. Oh, yeah. This boulder does not want to go over the fence. <laughs> the boulders don't punch you. They don't punch you in the <laughs> neck. <laughs> Damn, he was, he was headed over that fence if he didn't put up a fight. He has him there perpendicular long enough that Tank's brain, and he admitted to this afterwards, he had the thought of, I'm going to try to throw him over the fence. <laughs> I mean, you got to when there's a fence. So obviously he does not succeed in throwing him out of the octagon. Uh, he ends up winning the fight, but afterwards he does admit like, oh yeah, 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 I, I, I thought about it for a sec. But the reason I didn't is because he would just get back in. Which then opens up some a handful of questions of like, yeah, wait, shit, what would happen if he got the dude out of the ring? Yeah, well, question one is, would he climb over or would he use what I, I assume there's a door somewhere? And in that case, is Tank allowed to defend against the return? Yeah, it sort of becomes medieval at that point. Like he's going to start pouring like buckets of hot oil over the side of the fence or something and just like defend his castle, which again, <laughs> I think we're we're pushing towards something that's pretty entertaining here. And I don't know why you would make a rule against it. Now I'm just thinking about having the octagon surrounded by a moat, which I am sure some coked up bro has suggested at some point. There are not enough moats in sports. There's not enough moats in life. No, I, I'm gonna, this is fucked up. I don't think I've ever seen a moat. I don't want to brag about being cultured, but I have been to castles in England. And they, they had like active water filled moats? I don't know, man. I was young. I'm sure they did. Let's just, I'll edit this. Yes. <laughs> so shortly after Ultimate Fighting Championships, the Ultimate Ultimate 2, a foul was added to the rule book, making it illegal to throw your opponent over the fence. We, we've had episodes like this before where a rule exists because someone did something that hadn't been accounted for. But that person, in many cases, didn't actually achieve the thing that they realized was possible. And so I'm sure that our fella tank here is like, fuck, I should have just thrown him over the fence. You right. know, that was the last that was the last chance to do so without incurring a huge penalty. So why not seize the opportunity instead of merely introducing it? It sucks. Now, he did heed that exact advice when he fish hooked an opponent later on. And then that got added to the rules. OK, real quick. Fish hook. That sounds to me like it would mean you take your finger and you hook it in someone's cheek. Um, that would suck. I wouldn't want that done to me. I once got a fish hook caught in my eyelid. What? Yeah. How? I was a small child, like, rifling through my closet, and I had a fishing pole with a hook on it, and just in the dark, like, blinked onto a fish hook. That sucks shit. I'm sorry for everyone who just had to hear us end on that note. <laughs> wow, you're not cutting this? No. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I hope you're doing all right. I love what you're doing with your hair. Do you want another video? Like another UFC video? Maybe another Weird Rules? Whatever you pick, I hope you enjoy it, really.
Oh, what's that? What can you do for me? I don't know. If you want to subscribe, <laughs> that, that would genuinely make my day.